Hello and welcome to Burning Issues, the only program that provides you a regular glimpse inside to the Wichita Fire Department. I'm Captain Frank Buck, a member of the Wichita Fire Department. In this episode, we're going to talk about truck company functions at structure fires. Joining me today is Lieutenant Scott Trask and Lieutenant Chad Cox. Scott, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Scott Trask. I'm a lieutenant on the fire department. I've been with the fire department for 19 years. The last uh, nine years I've been a lieutenant between fire station number nine and fire station number two. I currently um, am on the promotional list to be promoted to captain and that's where I've been focusing a lot of my efforts lately. Okay. Chad, tell us a little bit. I'm Chad Cox. I've been a member of the Wichita Fire Department for 12 years now. The last three and a half uh, I've been a lieutenant. I'm currently assigned at fire station two on seat shift and I've been a member of the truck company program since the inception. Okay, thank you. Lieutenant Trask, just what is a truck company? A truck company is a ladder truck on the fire department. When I say ladder truck, I'm referring to the uh, big fire truck that has an aerial ladder on top. Truck 2 that I currently ride has a 100-foot aerial ladder on top of it and it has a bucket or a platform on the end of it that we work from, firefighters work from. Um, these truck companies are staffed with three firefighters. We have a driver, we have a company officer, and then we have a back-end guy. And these uh, trucks are equipped and trained to perform a variety of specialized functions on the fire ground in support of the engine company. The engine company are the ones that um, stretch and advance hose lines into the house or the building to put the fire out and the trucks are essentially the ones that help um, the engine companies put the fire out and make their job easier. Okay, thank you. Lieutenant Cox, what did the fire department do before truck dedicated truck companies? Uh, in 2007 is when our department decided to look at uh, dedicating truck companies or having dedicated truck companies. Prior to that, uh, the members of our rescue team, Station 4, were responsible for any of the ventilation that occurred at an apartment or building fire. And as far as a residential fire, it was just assigned to any crew that was on the scene. So in 2007 is when the department started gathering information and working on policies and procedures to have dedicated truck companies. 2009 is when the department came out with the truck company policy and in 2010 is when we started training specific members on the department to be on the dedicated truck companies. Okay. Lieutenant Trask, what are the functions of the truck company at a scene of a structural fire? And what, and, and how were these completed before truck companies were dedicated? Truck companies um, perform support functions for the fire attack crews to help them locate and extinguish the fire. There's an old acronym that is used to remember basic truck company functions and that is Lovers U. And that refers to ladders, which would be ground ladders or aerial ladders. Overhaul, which is um, opening up walls and ceilings to find hidden fire to help prevent rekindles once the fire department leaves. Ventilation, and there's two types of ventilation that we basically do is horizontal, which is opening a door, breaking a window, and kind of letting the smoke go out. Or vertical ventilation, which is cutting a hole in a roof, which um, is kind of like opening the flue in a chimney so the smoke goes out. Um, entry, so forcible entry, we have to get into the building to put the fire out, so we're ventilation, or excuse me, forcible entry. Search and rescue, searching for lost or trapped occupants. Salvage, which is protecting the uh, occupants' belongings, covering them up with tarps, taking them out, protecting anything that's not damaged. And utilities, which is um, disconnecting and electrical and the gas service. What the acronym doesn't address is timing, and some of these tactics need to be coordinated or things can go wrong. We do them at the wrong time, things can get worse, so we have to really coordinate those tactics. Some of these functions get performed at every structure fire and some of them don't, but with a limited amount of personnel on our trucks and just four truck companies in the city, some of these can't get done in a timely fashion that we need them to, so they're carried out by other companies in the city. Um, forcible entry, search and rescue, horizontal ventilation can be carried out by anybody. They don't need to have a ladder truck to do those, so they can do those on their own. And prior to the dedicated truck companies in Wichita, these functions were performed by all companies in the city and basically whoever got assigned to that function performed it, with the only exception being vertical ventilation, which was carried out by Fire Station 4. Lieutenant Trask, have you been on any recent calls that ventilation or any of the other functions were used? Yes, um, just recently, within the past month, we had a uh, building fire at 31st and Hillside. 
where there was significant fire on the interior and heavy smoke. And um, it definitely called for vertical ventilation on that alarm. And we were able to set a ladder to the roof and using a the thermal imaging camera, we were able to locate a heat, where the heat was in the building and cut a large hole for the ventilation crews. And um, they were able to advance in and put the fire out real smoothly. Explain what a thermal imaging camera is. A thermal imaging camera is a uh, camera that we have that reads heat. It um, differentiates heat temperatures, and we're able to uh, see heat and signatures in walls and in, uh, in the smoke. It allows us to see when we can't see normally. Okay. Lieutenant Cox, you, can you recall any incident recently that uh, these functions were used? Yes, we had a well-involved structure fire about a year ago that uh, some things didn't go as well as planned. We had a garage fire that was uh, involved into the attic. It spread into the attic and when crews were advancing in we were getting on the roof to try and open up a hole for the crews to release the, the heat and the gases in the fire and we had some issues where the smoke was so thick that it cut out our chainsaw so our backup plan we had to use an axe. Well, the delay of trying to get the hole opened up uh, fire started banking down on our crews and the, the interior crews had to make a rapid exit out of the structure because the heat was so intense. Once we were able to get the hole opened up, the crews were able to advance back in and knock down the fire. Lieutenant Cox, explain the importance of what truck company functions do at each fire. Sure. Um, kind of going along with what Lieutenant Trask said, uh, a number of these tasks need to be accomplished on the fire ground and currently there's a lot of information out there, scientific information conducted by the National Institute Standards and Technology, the Underwriters Laboratory, and they're finding a lot of information about things that happen on the fire ground that we can control and they have both a positive and a negative outcome. For example, just what they call the flow pass where they've, they've done the research and found that if the front door is left open on a residential fire, there's just a, a matter of time before that fire will come to the front door. They call it a flow path. Mm -hmm. So in, in the ventilation practices, that's something that we need to focus on and, and our truck companies do is, is we might control the door while the crews are trying to put the fire out or we might, we might bust out some windows to try and relieve the smoke or heat or depending on the fire, we might not bust out any windows and we might decide to get on the roof and cut a hole in the roof. So ventilation is just one of the aspects that's very important that our truck companies address along with everything else that Lieutenant Trask said that, that those things have to be done on the fire ground and when our truck companies get there they're, they're kind of a checks and balances for what's going on on the fire ground. Uh, another example we have our driver of the truck is called the outside vent man and one of his responsibilities on the fire ground is to try and do a 360 or go around to the rear of the structure and if, if available, he can control the utilities to the house. So he could shut off the gas, uh, if he can pull the meter, and that might make it easier for the crews on the inside that are pulling ceiling, they might not get electrocuted from the wires. So again, that's just another example. That might already be done when the truck company gets there, but that's just something that we look out for. You mentioned something about getting on the roof and ventilating, but I'm sure uh, bystanders are seeing firefighters on the roof and wondering what are those guys doing on the roof and that's a good explanation of getting up there and ventilating the, the smoke and the gases out of there for for the fire crews inside. Lieutenant Trask, how much training is involved to become a member of a truck company? When we first started the uh, program we got um, approximately 40 hours of hands-on and classroom training um, anywhere from reading smoke to building construction to forcible entry. Um, we take great pride in ourselves and our performance and we probably have a higher expectation of ourselves than what the public does. Um, skill development and maintenance is worked on all the time and one of the things that we work on is um, having a plan prior to an alarm. We call them pre-arrival assignments and what that does is it kind of formalizes thinking and gets everybody thinking before the alarm actually happens. Um, we have different plans for house fires and, and for building fires and we break those down further into different types of constructions for those properties and we have what we call target hazards. Um, for instance, newer houses and newer buildings are built differently than older buildings and houses and those new buildings 
we have about five minutes before we have to start worrying about collapse or failure of those components of the building. In older buildings, we'd have 30 or 40 minutes, sometimes even more than that, to get things done before we had to start worrying about those. So those are a lot of things we have to take into consideration. And um, with that five-minute time frame on those newer houses, sometimes it's not safe by the time we get there. So that's definitely something we have to worry about. Also, a plan assigns a degree of priority to those functions that we do. Life safety, obviously, is taking the first priority. Mm -hmm. um, we gain a lot of information for our plans from just responding to alarms. Um, but we also get a lot of information from building inspection program that we work on. And we call those building walkthroughs. And just getting out into these buildings and learning how they're built, different uh, characteristics of how smoke and fire can travel through those buildings, and even a layout of how that building is laid out will definitely help us perform our jobs um, when we get there instead of just winging it right. online and right. not having any idea what we're doing. So, yeah. get, to know, get to know your area is right. very important. Very, very important to know your area. Okay. Lieutenant Cox, what is the daily routine for a member of a truck company? The daily routine for our truck companies is, is no different than any of the other companies in the city. Well, we get to work in the mornings and the, the number one priority is to check out our, our equipment and the rig. For the truck companies, they have some extra saws, some different saw blades, things that, that need to be checked every day. Uh, they run the saws every day. They also check their air packs every day. We want to make sure everything's in running order for the day. It doesn't matter if the shift before checked it, we still check it every day. That's just something that we do. Uh, we look over the truck, we check all of the ground ladders, uh, all the equipment that's on that truck. And then uh, we're still responsible for our, our answering district. So throughout the day, we still make our general alarms, be it a medical, a car wreck, a car fire, a system alarm, a person stuck in an elevator. Any, any 911 call, the truck companies still respond to, just like all the other crews in the city. And then as, as far as our daily routine, it's kind of dictated on alarms, but then we also, like Lieutenant Trask said, we try and do our building walkthroughs, uh, building inspections. We try and do daily training, and that could be something as simple as just going out and throwing some ground ladders in the back slab of the station. Or sometimes we're fortunate enough, we get an acquired structure that's slated for or demolition, and we actually can go out there and we can do some hands-on work with the, with the crews on cutting holes in the roofs, doing searches, and uh, tearing up the structure. Good, good. Well, thanks for joining us. That concludes this episode of Burning Issues. Remember, Wichita firefighters are highly trained professionals who are your friends and neighbors. We are Wichita's bravest, and we serve you 24 hours a day, every day. Thank you.